Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is the best animated show to come out this year and a faithful adaptation of the comics and movie. Now that's a big statement, but let me explain. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is an adaptation of the Brian Lee O'Malley comic series Scott Pilgrim and also technically the 2010 film which was directed by Edgar Wright. The series had a lot to live up to, with the comics still being loved to this day and the film being considered a cult classic among many. So how could this new version possibly live up to such great expectations? Well, by bringing back all the actors and writers from the movie of course, that's right. Michael Sarah, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Kieran Culkin, Chris Evans, Brie Larson, all of them are back. And to make it even better, the original creator and Edgar Wright came to develop the show. This was surely a recipe for success, and I was hyped to see what the show had to offer. But for those of you who aren't familiar with Scott Pilgrim, Here's a quick synopsis. Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is essentially a completely different version of the Scott Pilgrim comics. It has the same basic elements. Scott, a 23-year-old bass player dating a high schooler, ends up falling in love with the girl of his dreams, Ramona Flowers. And that's not a figure of speech, she literally shows up in his dreams. The two of them start messing around, but unfortunately for Scott, in order for him to date Ramona, he has to defeat her seven evil exes in these video game style fights. The big difference is that in the original, Scott ends up defeating all of the exes and gets the girl. But here he gets packed up in the first fight. But Ramona is convinced that Scott isn't dead, and with the help of his friends, they try to figure out who could be behind Scott's fake death. All caught up? Great. Now let's begin. First and foremost, I have to talk about the animation and the art style. This might be the best looking animated project I've seen this year. That's right, I'm putting it up there with Spider-Verse, that's how much I love it. Now that might sound crazy, but again, just hear me out. One thing that I technically forgot to mention in the beginning is that this is an anime. It's animated by Sayan Saru, who interestingly enough also animated that Food Chain episode from Adventure Time, and you can definitely see the similarity. The way the colors pop out at the screen is so good, it's bright colorful, really saturated, which allows all of the fight scenes and action to look way more visually appealing than the movie in my opinion, which I always thought for a video game style movie had a lot of flat colors. The art style itself perfectly translates to characters from the comic books. They aren't just one-to-one -one copies of the comic designs, and I'd say that the designs of characters like Julie, Gideon, and Ramona look slightly better than the comic. They do a bunch of cool stuff with Ramona's hair and outfits, having it change at the start of each and every episode, which gives her that unique side to her that makes us understand why Scott was so infatuated with her. The animation is top notch, keeping that fast paced, frenetic nature of the fight scenes and comedy from the movie while still very much feeling like an anime with a lot of Japanese style humor in a lot of places. Which makes it different from all the other animated stuff that's pretty much just been blatantly ripping off the Spider-Verse animation style for years. One of my favorite moments in the show comes in the second episode, when Matthew Patel fights Gideon over control of the League of Evil Axes. The pacing, choreography, and creativity were all on point. The way they played with the setting made the fight scene feel like it was telling a story in itself. And not to mention all the corny one-liners you'd expect from a Scott Pilgrim show. Do it! Put me out of my misery! No, I wanna put you into your misery. Corny, lame, boo. Tomato, tomato. There's also a bunch of hilarious references to stuff relating to the comics and movie, like guest cameos from Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, who were both actors in films directed by Edgar Wright, who directed Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. That's really cool and something not a lot of people would notice the first time, but is brilliant for nerds like me who actually care about that stuff. There's also a bunch of video game references as well, as you'd expect, most notably being the Virtual Boy, which comes in the second to last episode. Anyone who watched AVGN back in the day should know what I'm talking about. This is exactly what a Scott Pilgrim animated show should look like, full of life and energy. So that's the art covered, but what about the actual story? How does this deviate from the comics and movies? Well, episode 1 follows the same basic formula the story generally takes. We introduce to Scott Pilgrim and his band Sex Bob-omb and his 17 year old girlfriend. Scott Pilgrim is 23. Pretty much everyone knows he should break up with her, but Scott's just doing it because he's still fucked up from his last breakup with Envy Adams. Scott meets Ramona and asks her out on a date, they have fun, and then they have fun, and Scott invites her to see his band perform live. It's here where he encounters Matthew Patel, the first of the evil exes, and instead of defeating him like he should do, he doesn't do that. He dies, however Ramona finds evidence that someone intentionally faked his death so everybody would think that he's dead. But the question is, who would do such a thing? So Ramona goes on her detective Pikachu shit and goes on an investigation to find out whatever happened to Scott Pilgrim. I'm gonna try to keep this review as spoiler free as I can, but it's gonna be hard to explain some things without giving a little bit of context, and knowing me, 
I'm gonna probably just give up and tell you the whole story anyway. This show took a really big risk with how they decided to switch up the story. I mean, how dare they completely change such a beloved and already good story to begin with? Well, in my opinion, this is probably the biggest selling point of the show and why everyone who was a Scott Pilgrim fan should watch it. The fact that the original creator had such a high amount of faith in the team that he was willing to completely switch it up just shows the confidence they had in the story they wanted to tell. Changes like having Ramona take the lead role of the show and giving more focus to the other characters are what kept me hooked from the beginning to end. Now, I will admit, I haven't read all of the comics, but I have watched the movie a few times. And one criticism I always had was that they didn't give a lot of the side characters moments to shine. While it may sound like a dumb thing to criticize a movie for, focusing on the main character, I still always think it's important to have a balance, maybe a B-plot or something to give another character some sort of development that still ties in with the movie. And this show has tons of that. There are so many moments and even episodes dedicated to individual characters like the exes, who aren't just treated as a group of big bads or instead treated like normal people, who just live in this hyperactive video game world. There's even more detail and emphasis placed on the fact that Ramona pretty much broke all their hearts and why they became the people they become. They even stop being evil by the end of the show when all the conflict is resolved and just become normal dudes and that's pretty cool. There's new character interactions that we never really saw before like Kim and Ramona, even and Knives, and the most surprising to me, Gideon and Julie. The main characters still act the same as they did previously, Wallace being the dry and charming one, young Neil being an absolute potato but still lovable, Knives being the excitable teenager who by the end shows way more maturity than Scott. But I'm also glad you died. It gave me a lot of space to reflect and grow. So thanks. And Ramona. I mean, she's just fucking awesome. Everyone's motivations for what they do is on point, and no one feels like they don't serve a purpose. So overall, I think the characters are the most entertaining part of the show for me. But hang on, not everything in this show is sunshine and rainbows. There are a few flaws that I have to address. Hey. Hi. You know Sonic the Hedgehog? For a show that's about the titular character Scott Pilgrim, there's a severe lack of Scott Pilgrim in the show. For context, he loses the fight in episode 1 and only comes back in episode 6 out of 8. This has the effect of the audience losing the development of Scott's character that we got before. In every other iteration, the main focus was always on Scott being a manipulative ass who was using a 17 year old as a rebound for his breakup, and how he slowly realizes that maybe he's kind of an asshole and how he's gonna deal with it. The movie did a great job at showing his growth by the end. You wanna fight me? For her? No. I want to fight you for me. Scott earned the power of self-respect. But here, you don't get to see that same development. You only get to see the consequences of that when he comes back at the end. And on top of that, it makes him and Ramona's relationship feel a tad more rushed than it was. On top of that, I don't think that the longer runtime helped the show in a lot of places. While on one hand, it gives us time to get to know the characters, on the other hand, the show feels way too slow for a Scott Pilgrim show. Maybe I'm comparing it too much to the movie and comic, but I much rather prefer the Edgar Wright style than whatever this is. Episode 5 is probably the biggest example of this. It's really slow in some places not really that funny, and honestly the story they told in 20 minutes could have been told in 10. That's another thing as well, the show just isn't that funny most of the time, and I feel like it can take itself a bit seriously. However, I can partly forgive the show for the multiple twists and turns that it offered, especially near the end. Maybe my brain has just become too used to YouTube shorts and I can't focus on shit for more than 2 seconds. Wallace is my cool gay roommate. He lets me use his credit card. Oh, so like a sugar daddy situation. Sugar what? So yeah man, that was the new Scott Pilgrim show, what more can I say? It has its cons, but the pros outweigh them massively. Older fans will appreciate the homage to the original comic, while a new fan can look forward to dope animation, fights, and just some good vibes with the characters. I'm gonna give this show 4 stars, it was so close to being perfect. Just like how it would be perfect for you to join the channel memberships and my Patreon, where you can get videos early, behind the scenes content, as well as dope stickers, I mean look at this shit. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the vid, have a good day, and take care.